the ideas are happening, the painting of you asleep is beginning to look lovely. I'm especially fond of the pear that rests on your sleeping head. The pear, not just mine, but the fruit, its image, feels so significant, so symbolic. Its weight, its color, but mostly its weight, pulling to be released from the branch. I'm not unproud of this work, and I think you too may like it, and soon it will be yours. Because, 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 I love you, Holly. I'm Holly. These are words that were written to me by my very good friend, Heather. This letter would have been sent about the time that we'd been out of school for a few years and had gone separate ways to opposite coasts of the country to art school. And in case it wasn't obvious, she was writing to me about a painting she was in the process of creating. And as I'm sure you can imagine, those words and the idea that she was painting me made me feel um, loved and unique and um, seen, right? It's interesting to me now, too, the words that she used. Um, you can tell a lot about the person that I want to talk to you about today. She was creative and intelligent and embraced beauty in a wonderfully unique way. And when she loved, she loved big. What you can't tell from the words in the letter is her physical beauty. Heather is totally gorgeous on the outside as well. We met when uh, we were about 14, and we didn't go to the same school. We lived in different parts of the city. We were very different personalities, but somehow we connected uh, deeply. Despite our differences, we became really close friends. What drew us together? In retrospect, I actually don't really know. We had a lot of similar entrances, interests, but our personalities were so different. Um, I think that maybe some of it could have had to do with our uh, tolerance of each other's kind of too muchness. We could both be rather intense in our own ways back then. I think it was not just in the tolerance of that too muchness, but we kind of enjoyed it in each other and could embrace it and celebrate it. And with all of that, our friendship was a little odd. Really different personalities, but connected in, in weird ways. I was full of curiosity about life and was looking for fun and adventure and more fun and more adventure, something to fill a hole I think I thought I had at the time. I had uh, zero impulse control <laughs> at the time. Heather, on the other hand, she was really smart and really serious. Even her laugh was serious. She had one of those open mouth, throw your head back, shake the whole room kind of laughs, and it felt like people shook with her when she laughed like that. Heather had a persona. She was like a character in a Henry Miller novel. There was something notably powerful about just being with her, even at a very young age. She knew what she was passionate about, and she worked hard to realize that. She had a long view of what she wanted, and she worked hard to get those things. Our friendship was strained at times, but that was usually when one of us got too deep in our own stuff. And we always came back to our friendship, though. It was one of those kinds of friendships where we could be apart for a long time and then come back together and find, find that place of consistency and security and a place where we could just be us and explore intellectual ideas and creative ideas and create our own new ideas. And she was a painter and I was a sculptor and we would do our artwork together. It was a place for truly experiencing a human connectedness and acceptance that I think at the time we both really uh, desperately sought. As a kid, my mom had a plate that was reserved for special occasions. It was wide and red and said in big white letters, you are special today. On my 15th birthday, I invited Heather to join us for my family birthday dinner. And when she showed up, she had daisies, just regular daisies, which was particularly awesome because I loved regular daisies. I still do. And I had maybe mentioned to her once that those were my favorite flowers. So as we walked over to the table, which was already set to put the daisies there, I heard Heather mumble something disapproving under her breath. And I figured it was just something about the superficial formality of the whole setting because we were way too cool for that kind of stuff at the time. A short while later, when we came back for supper, I sat down and I looked at the plate and saw there was a piece of paper placed over the white letters. And Heather had written, you are special every day. 
and she had every day in all capital letters. And, and that was Heather. She was sincere and heartfelt and loving, seriously sincere, seriously heartfelt, and seriously loving. Our lives took predictably different paths. Like I said, we were really different personalities. My choices took me down a path that landed me in really bad places, just like no, up to no good, alcohol, drugs, without a home, with an unexpected pregnancy. Um, and remember, Heather's beautiful, and she's driven and purposeful. And so her choices um, were arguably better ones and took her to a different place in her life. She was a master at yoga, literally. Um, she was a Peace Corps volunteer, and she continued her artwork, and she was an incredible painter. She surrounded herself with other beautiful people doing amazing things. Her friends were published novelists and Zen masters and botanists and symphony musicians, and you get the picture. A and then there was me. So I never quit quite fit Heather's life, um, but there was always room for our friendship. Um, she never quite fit mine. We, we found that consistency in our friendship um, and made space in our lives. I looked to her unofficially to kind of be my history keeper. She knew all of my stories and um, was my closest, longest friend. So fast forward, we're in our 30s. I had pulled my shit together. I was no longer a giant hot mess. I had married a good man, and together we had three wonderful kids. And I worked really hard and found my way into a really great job. And life seemed kind of on track, according to the way things are supposed to be going. So I was in Seattle visiting Heather. And we're sitting on her couch on one evening. And she seemed particularly melancholy and shared with me that she was sad and tired of feeling alone and isolated. And she inquired about my own relationship and my own happiness. And I explained to her, with what I now know was a good deal of false certainty, that there's a lot of days that aren't so great, but that the kids and the good days make up for the not so great days. And I don't remember the exact words that I used, but I know they were things like compromise and being mature, how we need to accept that we don't always get what we're looking for, that relationships are a lot of hard work, that probably most importantly, that we have to change in order to make things work. And even as I'm standing up here sharing that with you, it, like I feel a little queasy at just how much, how full of shit I was, right? I was basically asserting to this woman who was looking for some connection that it was completely normal to sacrifice some part of one's wholeness in pursuit of some way that things are supposed to go. And through my own kind of bullshit story, that's what I understood to be true, and it's kind of what I needed to do at that time to course correct the decisions where my life had taken me. I was telling her to compromise her sense of self in order to kind of have, to have love, to have acceptance, to even have the good job. Having my eyes turned inside, I failed to just be with Heather in her own space. I failed to see her in the way she made me feel seen so often. I left her alone while I was sitting right next to her. Just a few years ago, back in Seattle on Thanksgiving, in between visiting friends, Heather stopped at a train yard and stepped in front of a train and died. So now I send my favorite daisies to her mom every Thanksgiving to thank her for the gift of her daughter. And because, because, because I love you, Heather.